like a snowball effect. The more videos you make, the more your content. You know how it works. How more your content gets pushed. Yeah, I'm trying to make more consistent videos. Yeah, for sure. Here we go. All right, Already we live. Go. Yeah, we live. Cool. So, uh, my name is Garrett. You can call me Bravo. Whatever you want. White chocolate. Anything. I grew up in Dallas. Uh. I've been doing music. I've been on kind of a spiritual journey for like the past eight years as far as like law of attraction, manifestation, meditation, spiritualism. Uh, recently got into a lot of self-improvement um, and that's where I am now. And then uh, right here is my buddy Kyle, right right here. What's up guys? Kyle Little, a fellow semen retention YouTuber. Uh, I was just browsing today on the new videos posted and I found Bravo's channel and i decided to reach out to him and see if he wanted to make podcasts unfortunately about i'm gonna tell you about 99 percent of the time that i do that it does not happen and somebody hits me up and they're like hey you want me to record on my iphone and i'm like no bro sorry that doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> but bravo came through i seen he had a freaking picture of like a gaming setup and i was just like okay this guy's fucking for real so here we are <laughs> yes sir are we in here yeah we're chilling yeah, so we're going to shoot a podcast today. It's probably going to be about an hour, maybe two hours. Uh, he's live on his channel now. I'm pre-recording this, so I will post this on my channel later. It will take about probably 10 hours to upload. It's going to be a big upload. But yeah, so we're going to shoot a podcast. We're kind of just going to brush over a little intro real quick. Uh, he's going to introduce himself. I'm going to introduce myself, and you guys can kind of get a little background of who we are. So I'll let you go first. Bravo. Cool. Um, so I started YouTube probably about eight years ago on a separate channel. I was doing live. I was doing like a live music, playing music on the street with them with one of my buddies. Um, that channel ended up actually getting taken down because he he I guess he like reported a lot of the stuff. We had a falling out. He reported a lot of uh, the music saying it was like copywritten or not mine or this and that. So I took the channel down. And then here recently, like in the last year or two, I started another channel to do covers and do music. And um, then I recently just, I've been watching a lot of self-improvement videos because I've been going through in and out of relationships, trying to figure out with women, like what's going on? Like, what am I doing wrong as a human? What, am, what are they doing? How can I understand myself? How can I understand them? and come to find out it's just it all has to do with yourself like you you can't really control other people but you can manipulate other people in a positive way or a negative way but i i choose to do it in a positive way so but the but the way to start manipulating in a beneficial way is you know changing yourself first so my journey my recent journey started when um corona hit and i knew i had to make a change in my life and i was like let me just change everything about myself. Let me change my diet. Let me change my eating habits, everything that I was doing. Let me just wipe the slate clean and go for exactly whatever I wanted in life. And so that's where I am today. Made a video yesterday about no fap semen retention, which I found while scrolling through various self-improvement videos. I watched this one dude called, uh, I don't even know his name, but the, but the channel is called self-developed. And then there's another channel called How to Beast, and they're both pretty successful, very quality videos. Not all have to do with NoFap, but you know, it, it kind of all ties in together. So that's where we are today. Cool. So you're so what kind of I'm gonna ask you a question, but what kind of led you towards that? Was it just kind of like a natural progression, or do you think coronavirus kind of pushed you towards self-development? It was a natural progression, honestly, because with being you weren't in, like you weren't like fucking around and like doing drugs and getting drunk and shit before that and like screwing around in life. No, I mean, I, I drank occasionally, but I was never a drinker. And like I used to like I used to kind of be like a pothead like in high school or whatever. But like it was never anything serious. But I knew that when I did it it didn't feel right. Like other people could use it and be fine. Like, but I just knew like when I did those things, I never felt good on them. Okay. That's that. Honestly, you're probably really blessed that that happened to you because mm -hmm. not everyone has that reaction and a lot of people get addicted to drugs. You probably, you probably got very lucky having that reaction. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. So I'm Kyle. We've already introduced ourselves, but I'm Kyle little. I have a semen retention YouTube channel. 
that's what I call it. It's there's a whole bunch of other stuff on there. I pretty much talk about everything that I go through. I did daily videos for like I think like sixty days straight this year. Um, Sick. Just to really give people kind of an idea of kind of what's going on through someone's head on a day to day basis when you're like I was working eighty four hours a week and I was practicing semen retention. I was doing big fasts, like fasting for twenty four hours a day, and just really trying to push out as much old bad habits that I could and just kind of see how far I can take like the extreme. And I did, I did an entire month. I did like 24 hour fast every day and kind of yeah. just, I went crazy, bro. And I just, the whole point of me making this channel was one for me to log my life, right? So that I can look back and see it. And also to, you know, I know I have a lot to say and I always have, and I have um, very, very loose opinions, I'd say. So I'm, I'm a free thinker, and I wanted to use this platform basically just to project my thoughts somewhere that someone else would actually appreciate. Because in normal life, a lot of the times you work in places where people would not give a flying about what you have to say on here, and this gave me a place to connect with like-minded people. And here we are. Look, I'm on a podcast with someone else who thinks similar. So that was kind of another reason why I started a YouTube channel. The other one was that I did not want young men to go through what I went through with like porn addiction, because that was the basis of what launched me towards self improvement was realizing that I was just like damaging my ability to connect to women through porn, because that's what it does. It completely destroys your ability to connect with women, other people, yourself, it crushes your own soul. Um, I'm talking about like porn addiction, like daily use. And I wanted to enlighten other young men that thought like I did. And I thought it wasn't a big deal. But until someone wakes you up and goes and shakes you and goes, dude, what the heck are you doing? Like, this is messing you up. That's the person that I wanted to be was that guy that went, hey, what are you doing? I didn't want to be the person consuming pornography, obviously. Right. So. And that's what launched me out of that space. And then I, I came from a very dark place. Like I used to sell drugs. I used to do a bunch of bad shit. I uh, kind of was out for trouble most of my life. Not the last four years, luckily. <laughs> I pulled it together and really got my life together. And things have gotten incredibly, incredibly better. Like my life's great. I have no problems. I have no financial issues ever anymore. It's been years since I've even thought about money. It's uh, it's kind of crazy, actually. And I've done it completely legitimately, and I've paid all my taxes. So, yeah, I came from a dark place, and I wanted to basically just make this channel to keep other young men from going down that path, If even if it meant them not watching porn. That was, that was that's enough for me. So Yeah, and that's and, uh, that's very respectful. Like, and, like, let me ask you a question. Like, so when was the exact moment, if you can remember, like, you knew – they were like, I'm giving up porn. I'm changing my life. Well, there was an exact moment, and I do remember it. Um, I had taken Adderall, and I had watched porn for 10 hours one day. And this wasn't a regular occurrence. This maybe was like twice a year that something like that would happen. But I had done it, and I just got out of that. And I remember... <laughs> Cause I was under like some, a psychosis. That's what amphetamines put you under. It's like this, you stay awake for too long and you start hallucinating. And I seen this angel like come down. I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a white orb light. And it just like filled me. I felt terrible. Like I felt depressed. I just jerked off for 10 hours on stimulants. And this thing came down and just filled me with this feeling I couldn't describe in that moment. It was like pure love and it just surrounded me. And I knew it was God because I've always had a very religious family. Um, but I didn't at that moment. That moment, I had no idea what was going on. And I woke up that next day after sleeping for like 20 hours. And I thought to myself, said, and this was the first time I ever thought to myself that I had a problem. I was like, I have, this is an issue. Like there's something inherently wrong with this. And then it was just relapse after relapse for a long time. This was when I was about 19. So this is about five years ago, almost six years ago now. And then uh, once I had realized, once I had that thought, because I hadn't seen any YouTube videos on semen retention or anything like that at the time, I was completely in my own space. Like I was king shit. I thought I was 
the best person on earth. I had dropped out of high school and was making like 10 grand a month selling Coke. <laughs> it was, it was a bad, bad time in my life. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't saving any of it. I was spending it all. And, um, so I had that divine moment then. And then I realized that I had an issue and I wish I would have realized that a lot sooner. <laughs> and I realized I had an entire life issue too at that moment, just in general. And that's when I just started cleaning it up, man. It really, but I was, it was weird because I maintained that lifestyle while also like being a gym rat and also holding a job at the same time. So I wasn't like a drug addict. I was a drug dealer. And you were functioning. I didn't have a problem with drugs. I had a problem with growing up poor and not wanting to be poor anymore and doing anything that it took in order for me to make money, even if it meant hurting other people. Which obviously, as I grew up as a man, I realized that's totally unacceptable behavior. Totally unacceptable behavior. And that's exactly what dealing drugs does is it harms other people directly. Like that's what you are doing, whether you want to disassociate from that fact or not, um, you're harming others. So I had to stop that. I had to stop that and I had to stop all my other destructive habits that I had learned from growing up in like a lawless household. Like I had no parenting really. So I kind of just did as I pleased, which, you know, turned out good in some ways. Um, I really grew up quick. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but yeah, I had a tough upbringing. I, I like to tell people that when I first meet them just so that they understand that and then they can kind of begin to realize where, where a lot of my thinkings came from, I guess. So I'm a pretty open book. Um, I tell people in my personal life, my past too, it doesn't really matter. It wasn't that bad. I didn't, I never got in trouble. Um, I never ha hurt anybody. Nobody actually got hurt. But when I say it hurts people, I say, I mean, drug addiction hurts people. Um, especially like w the guy that sold me cocaine shot himself in the head at a lake cabin at the age of 18 years old because he had mental health problems. Like it's a bad world to be in. Basically drug dealing is either, you know, get killed or go to prison. So it's not something you want to be a part of. You know what actually inspired me to tell this story? I'm going to tell you right now. There's this YouTuber, Brandon Carter. Um, he was a fitness YouTuber and he was one of the first YouTubers I found. And that was his story. He used to sell cocaine until one of his friends got shot. And then he turned to, well, he was already in the fitness industry kind of, but he was, you know, in the underworld. And then now he's a multimillionaire just off of fitness YouTube and selling courses and stuff like that. So I would have never even had the confidence to tell people that story because I didn't think that anyone would even, I, I thought that people would judge me, but now I look at it and I'm like, that's why I am who I am today because I went through the, uh, the underworld of <laughs> that is drug dealing and realized that, wow, there's no God here. Right. And that's not a place anyone should be. Right. I don't know if it, it, you don't have to believe in a higher power, but, at least believe in a universe that washes after you. And I tr sincerely believe that if you're in line with what the universe wants for you and what, who knows what that is, but I think it's just the things that we've, we've been doing me and you in the last year or two or three, I think that's yeah. what the universe wants us to do. Yeah, definitely. I, and I mean, God or whoever you want to believe in your case, God, in my case, God as well. Um, yeah. He was watching over you the whole time while doing that. I mean, because you never got in trouble, you never got hurt, and if he wasn't watching over you, then he, then he would have something would have happened. And you, you know, you're lucky, and, and in a sense, like we we're comparing to that because, like, I myself, I sold weed from when I was like 15 to I was like 21, and it was the same thing. I mean, it, weed's different than cocaine, but it's all the same. Like, you know, you're hurting people, you're getting people addicted to something, they're coming to you, they're yeah. like using you as a, you know, I, I need you, I need you, like this and that. And when you couldn't provide for them, it was like, you know, you felt bad because they needed something and you weren't available or whatever. Oh. And then it's, you, you make this money and then the money's good and then you spend it. And it's like, well, what did I just do all that for? I'm just doing it to consume, to consume materials, to consume food or whatever just to like bullshit and be like, Oh, I'm cool. I sold weed. You know what I mean? No purpose to get out of it. There's no purpose. Where's the purpose? Yep. Doesn't exist. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
That's the worst part. I think that's the most criminal thing about the easy way out in any situation is that you don't get that feeling of like actually doing something. You know, that's that feeling that I think that all men strive for is that feeling of like accomplishment and like actually making something. That's why I think we like doing YouTube and stuff like that because it's creative. We get to, we're creating a video right now for other people to watch and maybe get something out of or resonate with. I think it's one of the most beautiful things ever that a man can do is create and that is what semen retention lets you tap into is that creativity because that shit gets blurred man if you're if you're wasting your energy your mm -hmm. creativity gets blurred really badly and you wonder why and i used to wonder why like i used to be such a creative kid where has all my creativity gone and you realize yeah it's being wasted on and it can be wasted on anything pornography is just an example right but it's the extreme example because i think pornography is the most high dopamine release that you can really humanly achieve <laughs> besides doing like methamphetamine or something pornography is definitely up there on that rat lever that dopamine lever so it's one of the most addictive things and therefore it's probably one of the most destructive things but you can it can happen to anyone people get addicted to watching anime people get addicted to playing video games whatever it might be those things can have negative um, impacts in your life and i like to make young men aware of that but at the same time i don't like to be an extremist because i think that we live in a in a time period where there's too much extreme thinking and too much extreme left, right, blah, blah, blah. I think that you just need to find balance in your life as a man and you will, I think you'll have a happy life. And that's kind of what a lot of older men will say to you. They'll say, find balance. Like, why are you being so extreme? Why are you being so aggressive? Just find a nice balance for yourself and stick with it. And then you'll have a good, health, happy, healthy life. But don't, like extremes are always gonna mess you up. And I, I went extreme with semen retention because I, I think I did like, four months straight and um that was like crazy because i was also i worked <laughs> 12 hours every day during that four months not a day off not a single day off and i was just kind of like this machine and um i really saw what man's capable of doing in that time period which was cool but i don't i did that just so that i could come back and say don't do that like you can go for it and you feel amazing during that time period but you're in this crazy like hyper productive state when you're not altering your body at all it's crazy you get in this weird robotic mode where you can almost accomplish anything and you don't get like anxiety is non-existent things that would normally like slow you down and stop you from doing anything are just gone so it's all i mean they they do compare semen retention to the limitless pill and in long streaks i, I would somewhat compare it to that but it's like this this insurmount insurmountable about energy that you have, and if you like, like I started drinking too <laughs> during um, my four month semen retention streak. Cause I ended up in Germany during a small portion of it. And yep. what do you do in Germany? You drink, <laughs> and just with that super energy behind me and the alcoholism, <laughs> it was just it, it, semen retention can push you into some crazy, like it can push you into some crazy like states of mind where you're just like an animal. And if you're not careful, you know, you can really like spin mentally out of control. And I think a lot of people that do practice um, sexual harnessing and whatever you want to call it, semen retention, do, I think, sometimes go a little crazy um, because they don't really know like how to deal with <laughs> that state of mind. And then maybe sometimes they're not fully prepared for it because they just do semen retention and then they just don't do anything else. So you go to the gym, you work out, right? Yeah, definitely. I've been starting to go actually back to the gym now because the apartment that I just moved into, they have a gym. You don't have to wear masks. It's no one's ever there and I don't pay any fees. So it's chilling. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I preach. I just preach finding hobbies and stuff because I think it's so easy and it's easy for myself to just fall into fucking playing video games and just doing everything on technology and there is a time and a place for that. And luckily me and your generation has been born in between technology and tree houses. That's what I, I always say. We've been born in between technology and tree houses and tree houses don't fucking exist anymore because they're on their iPads. Right. Right. Me and you were fortunate enough though, to have a foot in both ponds. So we've got the foot in reality and then we've got the foot inside of the internet. But a lot of kids these days are being born without that ability. They're being born straight in iPads there at like four years old. Just And I think it's going to be, well, they said that on the social dilemma. I think it's going to be a really interesting 
to see kind of how child brain development <laughs> happens on a screen on the internet. And it's just even from watching my sisters that are like four or five years younger than me, I've seen kind of how it's impacted them a little differently, especially social media within schools and stuff like that, that kind of stuff. And then like, obviously social media is full of suggestive imagery. I pretty much call Instagram Pornhub because it almost is for a young man because every, you can find so much ass on Instagram. It's ridiculous. Like there's unlimited amounts of basically naked women on and Instagram. And same with TikTok. And TikTok's even worse because they're underage. <laughs> mm -hmm. TikTok is literally, I'm, I, it's a pedophile application. It is designed for pedophiles to thrive on. I have not said that out loud, but I'm saying it on this podcast. Say it, preach it. I made a video about how TikTok rots young people's brains because my girlfriend that I started dating had it downloaded and I made her delete it. And she's like, oh, they're going to delete it in the United States. And I said, no, they're not. They're just saying that delete it right now. And I made her delete it. And she hasn't had it for a month. And she comes to me and she says, I feel better. I'm like, no shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not sitting there raping your brain with three seconds of dopamine. Like every just, second, it, every second, something new, something new, something new, something new. It's like, you don't need that. And it's pointless. You're not learning anything. It's just people going like that. No. No, nah. but that's like the the trickle down effect. That's what lets you know that social media is addictive because TikTok's a prime example of how addictive social media is because it's gotten reduced down to three second videos. That's how short the intention spans have gotten. And I won't subject myself to it. Every time someone tries to show me a TikTok video, I just <laughs> get it, bro. I understand. I get it. Like I could. There's so much money to be made on it too, and it's just like. I get it. Like, I understand, but I just can't be a part of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't support yeah. TikTok. I'm not a TikTok supporter just because I know that it's literally designed to be like heroin for young children. And it's bad for predators, too, because you'd be surprised the amount of predators on the Internet that are looking for little children. And TikTok and Instagram are the perfect places for people like that to crawl around. So I, I just don't support the app. And there's a reason it has been suggested that it's been removed in the United States. <laughs> yeah, say. it's uh, it's something else. Like I only have it because I thought it would it could help boost my music success. It, it can, but it, no, it, it can. It, it can oh. like if you use if you like the right videos, you like one wrong video, and now your whole feed is filled with shit that is not related. Sorry for cussing, so, but. So TikTok is basically algorithm completely. It's like a complete algorithm. Like the entire thing's an algorithm. Mm -hmm. Is that how it works? Because I've never actually had the app downloaded. So you'll like yeah. something and it'll just suggest related stuff like that on your All feed. All similar stuff. Yep. And if you so it's just like, unlimited. It's an unlimited feed. It becomes an unlimited feed, basically. Yep. So you could just go for days straight down on your homepage. Just go for days. Yeah. Uh, mine's filled with like food and like tips and then musicians. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But if you're scrolling down and you just see little half naked girls and you're a little girl dancing around, like that's what they're looking at. Just little half naked girls and they're a little girl going like that. Or it's a little boy and there's little boys that are like super pretty on there. And just look at them like I'm ugly or I have a small dick or blah, 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 blah. It's just as bad. And I think mentally disturbing as porn for some young children because they sit there and they compare themselves to people and they do it every three seconds. It's a different person. So they're like, Oh, I'm not this person. I'm not this person. That's just an example, but that's how young minds think. They're very volatile. Young minds are not stable at all. They're very moldable, obviously, but yeah, I, there's both sides because TikTok can also be used as a, the greatest marketing tool of all time for musicians because mm -hmm. the entire app revolves around people playing music over what they've and there's not a lot of i don't think there's a lot of copyright with in that kind of stuff with those three second clips so i think people pretty much just have free reign on tiktok to use people's music and that's how a lot of people have gotten popular right a lot of yeah people, a lot of tiktok songs well every rapper um every rapper video that comes out now i see someone say like if you weren't here from tiktok so obviously tiktok's having a massive influence on what is getting played in music Right, like you still have to upload the song to Spotify in order to find it on TikTok. 
Okay. But like, so, but then you can also, you know, it's a video, you can record music in the background and you can do your thing and you can sing or freestyle or whatever. Any sound that you make, you can create it as an audio. So then it could be created and used by somebody else. But to get oh, your so music like, on, mm -hmm. it's open like all this podcast, like we're creating right now, someone could use my audio right now and use that as a background music. But you okay. have, in order to get a song, like you, it has to come from Spotify. It has to be searchable. Okay, so Spotify must have some sort of contract with TikTok. Then there, there's somebody's getting bread there, for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's all it's all interlocked together. They're all making money. Well, you remember that they said they were going to delete it in the U.S. or ban it, and that did not happen because I'm sure it makes way too much money. It's got a hundred million too. down. Store. But I forget how TikTok actually makes money. It's Definitely not. Are there ads on TikTok? I can't remember. Just people do like personal. There are ads. there are ads on TikTok, and then people that have like a lot of followers, they can um, when they go live, people can buy TikTok money. So like you can spend like however much money you want and get like these uh, basically like bitcoins for TikTok, and There's then like you can give them money, and and then so like the creators are getting money, and then TikTok's getting money. And then the ads are getting money. So yeah. it's and, it's just a money play. Super short videos, so they're just plowing through those views too. <laughs> oh like, yeah. Some people hey, we got a viewer right now. What's up? What's up, bro? How's it going? Yeah, they're just I, I can I think the high one of the highest viewed TikTok channels is just like an insane amount of views. Can't even remember. It's like billions at least. Yeah, it's nuts, dude. And we saw this kind of stuff with like Vine and stuff, but I think TikTok's a much more watered down version of similar apps that it's created. And I think it's just the, the the bottom line. I think is social media. I don't even know what can come after TikTok, like something like that. That's so so directed towards short attention spans. Like, imagine trying to watch TikTok all day and then go watch a ten or eleven minute YouTube video. I don't even think you could do it. I don't mm -hmm. think you could do it. Anyway, enough about TikTok. I I don't personally you're, like it. You're passionate about not liking it? <laughs> kind of. <Yeah. laughs> I did make a video about it. I just did it. I see so many kids watching it, and every time I look at it, I just can't. I don't understand. And it might be because of what they're watching, probably. It's probably because of what they're watching. I might enjoy it more if I watch some more, uh, I don't know, related things other than people, little girls dancing and little boys fucking dancing around. That's just yeah. all I see. Every time I'm at an airport and I look down and there's a fucking 10 year old looking at TikTok, it's just some little kid just dancing. <laughs> well, speaking of TikTok, so I think the person in here right now is Lardy B, who's an artist out of Dallas. She is an incredible singer. She, uh, she, she uses TikTok actually pretty religiously, but she makes dope TikToks that are like super creative. Yeah. So uh, she's part of this studio that I go to. I met her the other day. She's a very sweet person, just does not care. But at the same time, hey, she just, <laughs> we know you love TikTok, Lardy. <laughs> <laughs> she comes in here while I'm just like, TikTok yeah. this, TikTok that. No, yeah. I, I understand there is a massive, like I said this prior, you can rewind, that I understand there is a massive um, potential for music artists on TikTok. For and sure. Lottie blew up on there. She has hundreds of thousands of followers and it's only helped her. But there's good and like we were talking about earlier, there's good and bad with everything. There's moderation with everything. Like anything that you do in life, you just have to pick and choose, you know, your your path. Oh, totally. Yeah. And that's that's up to you. And I mean, really, at the end of the day, you can do whatever you want. This is America. We're in free country. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful every day that I wake up <laughs> that that we get to experience life in this place in this in this current current area in the world. It's we're we're blessed, man. We're blessed every day we wake up. So there's really no reason to be to be upset about anything ever. I think. Yeah, it's it, life is good, and and that's kind of one of the things that I've been finding on doing this whole like journey with the uh, you know no fab or whatever you want to call it. It's just like when you don't focus your mind on something sexual, like, yes, like, okay, so I will be, admit, like, when I make music, I, I love making sexual music. And that's something that I'm, I can easily speak about because I'm not saying that I'm like well versed in sex or anything, but like, it's, uh, it's something that, you know, has always kind of came natural to me as a person. 
um, with women and stuff like that. But like, I don't know. It's now that I'm not focusing on that, like I'm focused, finally focusing on myself instead of like what other people are doing and like how they can, like, what can you do to please me? Kind of like, it's more of, okay, how can we help each other? What can I get? What can I put my mind on during the day? That's not focused on porn. That's not focused on yeah. like, you know, stuff like that. And it's just finding like what you're saying, you're, you're transmutating your sexual energy into your passions, into your creativity. Now, what I found is I can write a song in five minutes before if I had, you know, watch porn or, you know, like what the thing, uh, at all during the day, I find myself tired. I'm hazy. I want to fall asleep really early. I don't have any energy to talk to people. I don't find people interesting. It's just, it's not the same. You know, it's like now it's like, okay, I want to write this song because when I finish this song, I'm going to feel good about it. And when I feel good about it, then it's going to, something else is going to happen. And it's not even about the song. It's like, I clean my house. Yeah. I do my dishes. I, I, everything, my mental clarity, like everything is just, there and i don't have to be like i'm not ADD. You don't, you don't have to go through this mental gymnastics with yourself to get yourself to do something yes yeah it's like uh like right dang like i have like i have talent but like now i have to write a song and it's like but should i write a song or should i like or should i go to sleep or should i play video games and it's like you're not gonna make money playing video games no you know? you're, you're, not, you're not gonna feel as good as when you write a song Exactly. And then everybody can hear the song. And, and like what you were saying, it's like, I don't even really make, I make music for other people to enjoy. Yes. But at the same time, I make music because that's something that I love to do. And whenever I look back on life, when I'm dead and I come down as a spirit and everybody is remembering me, they can see, Hey, Garrett put out music. Garrett was doing what he loved to do. Garrett did this. Garrett did that. Man, I want to be like, like Garrett or like what you're saying, the younger men or younger women. I want to yeah. be something that they can look at and be like, dang, he's really doing it. Like I need to invest in myself, you know? Yeah. You don't want to leave behind a shit legacy. <laughs> Nobody not. does. Nobody does. No man does. But there's so many things that have been designed to stop, stop. Oh, uh, you got the little croix. Bam, yeah. Bam. I got the, the variety pack. You got, you got the, you got the uh, fresh water. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. It's uh, there's just so many things put in our way. I think, um, but it's like all human made, so it's kind of funny. It's like ironic that we made all this shit that's like distracting us from like what we should really be doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really ironic. We thought it was going to help us, and, but in reality, a lot of these things, if used incorrectly, um, can really like hurt us. So, I think there's a place for everything if you can manage. Um, social media and I do like I still have an Instagram, but I just follow minimal people is what I've begun to do And that's kind of kept things off my feed and that keeps me away from scrolling, right? And mm -hmm. just just being aware when you're using social media too Like once you start going down a pathway social media is really easy to just click on one thing You click on someone's picture and then boom It's an hour later and you've looked at 20 different people and thought everything you could about them and then but if you can realize when that's happening and then stop yourself from going down that pathway on the first person or whatever. And, and if you can do that, social media is okay for you. But some people will just sit there and waste many hours. And if you're one of those people, you, you just you need to take a break from social media, basically. Like I think a lot of us probably have in our lives at some times. And then come back and kind of refocus how your approach is social media. And also, if you're not using social media for like a purpose, for like some kind of a reason, and you're just mindlessly scrolling memes or whatever, and you're not actually using it to like promote yourself in life or like use it as a creative outlet, I don't really think there's even a place for you to use social media. If it's not like you're not getting information out of it or you're not getting some kind of like benefit out of it. If you're just, if the things that you're viewing aren't causing any thought, then there's really no reason for you to even be looking at them, honestly. But that's just me speaking from an, from my perspective. Um, I know there's a lot of people that just like to look at mindless stuff, um, but I just, I can't. I yeah. Can't. If I were on TikTok, I'd have to be watching something that was like either, either very musically talented or someone that had really fully thought out, like it was a full like vision, <laughs> you know?
Yeah. Like I recently, like not recently, like in the last couple of months, like, you know, everybody wants to do the same thing. Everybody wants to follow world star and everybody wants to follow shave room and E news and all these like big people. I unfollowed all of those because the only thing that they do is they stir up shit and they're trying to divide people by saying, by doing this. And then people are in the comments and it's like all negative And then everybody's just like negative back and forth with each other. And then like, what's the point of that? Like, there's no, we're supposed to be like coming together as like a world and not as like, uh, enemies, you know, but like, oh. it can help you like world star can help you. Like you get posted on world star and you blow up. But at the same time, world star will post something racist or something this or something that and then people have an opinion about it and that's where all these opinions form and then that's how all this black lives matter stuff happens and like it's it, it's it creates problems that are that are there like there are true problems yeah. but in our society there's there's no more there's no more of those problems if we don't create them so totally no you just hit it spot on there are no more of those problems unless we create them but that's kind of the the double-edged sword with becoming um a wealthy country and i mean a lot of people will argue that the united states isn't wealthy but it is um we <laughs> go any go almost anywhere in the united states to any like middle middle ground city and most people are living pretty well so we've reached this point where like when I say pretty well, you can like afford to buy technology and spend money on useless shit. That's what I mean by doing pretty well. Or because, they have good credit. Or they have good credit because in most of the rest of the de developing world, that isn't even a reality for those people. And mm -hmm. it, it takes it takes either like exposure to those kinds of things or just like I've, I work in tr a trade and I've seen where the trade trickles down to like where people are stomping on concrete with their bare feet and fucking making it. Like I've seen it go all the way down to Africa from where, like I build concrete furnaces and I've seen where the concrete gets made and those guys get paid five cents a fucking day. And we got people in America who are just complaining about there not being a fucking shorter line at Starbucks. And it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of depressing sometimes. And it almost seems like we're in the, I don't know if you, you know the ancient like when rome was really like thriving the ancient roman civilization and they, they became like hypersexual um they just ate and threw it up stuff like that because they had so much access to pleasure that they became like consumed by it as a society and they started just doing all kinds of degenerate stuff in order to get their rocks off and i kind of think that that's somewhat where america's at right now in a sense, we've got too much freedom and too much money, and now we're just fucking and doing drugs and partying and being crazy, and then being spoiled little brats about it at the same yeah. time. Like, well, I have this money. What can I buy today? Okay, if I can't buy something, I might not be as happy as I could be. But then, but then when you achieve it, it's like, when are you ever going to like have enough? And I think that's something that I learned a lot over um, the quarantine was. A lot of the places that we once knew that we could just freely go into every day were shut down and you don't have that freedom anymore. So then it's either you, you fully break down as a person and you're like, Oh, poor me. Like I'm so deprived of not having these things that life has given me, or you can be like, okay, how can I be self-sufficient? Yeah. A, a lot, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people were like, Oh my God, like in depression and like domestic violence, all that happened because what do you do with your life? If you don't go to stores and you don't consume, what do you do? You just live your life and you move on. Like, like a lot of people were before that, mm -hmm. but a lot of people were so stuck in these external things. And then those got, like you said, they got removed from our society temporarily. I mean, all this is going to come back. There's absolutely no way we can continue to, to, to drill into our economy like this. There's no chance it's going to, I think after the presidential election, they're going to reopen almost well, they've already given the states the option to open things, so yeah, they have. I think naturally, everyone will just reopen. But so you say yeah. you're in Idaho, right? Yeah. So we've been like the least affected state out of all this. It's we pretty much had a maybe a technical lockdown for maybe a month out of all of this, like where everything was shut down. Every, like yeah. I'm talking everything, like you couldn't go do anything. About a month, four weeks. It's kind of crazy 
actually watching the rest of the world go through this. And then, but I've been traveling throughout this entire year too, as well. I've gone to like eight different states via airplane and have had no issues. So this entire thing really was just a minor inconvenience, I think, for certain companies, but other companies, like obviously airlines got destroyed, decimated. Um, mm. A lot of bad things happened because of this. Small businesses got completely decimated. Um, but the average person benefited from this. Isn't that kind of funny? Because they got a bunch of free time. They got free money. And um, But I don't know. I'm, I'm still questioning the impact of CV, of coronavirus. I am still questioning it because I don't think that we've actually seen any of the impact yet as far as our economy goes. But that's just my personal opinion. I think... I think we're going to head towards an economic recession for like maybe eight months or a year after this. And it just hasn't quite hit yet because of so much government help. <laughs> right. If there were, if there would have been no government help. America would have been very like the American lower class, the middle class, like slightly going into middle class would have been destroyed because what's the statistic? It's like the average American only has like $500 saved in their bank account. Yeah. I don't know if that's true though. If that's true, then if they would have not given the Americans a stimulus check, the economy would have completely crumbled. Um, and my other concern right now, I don't know if you're in financial stuff, are you? Sure, bring it on. Okay, my other concern right now with the American economy and banking is that, because I'm always in the housing market um, looking for rentals, and I've seen them doing the same kind of behavior, banks towards um, unqualified people that they did back in the uh, the 08 housing market crash. So they're, my girlfriend is 19 and she has good credit, but she has like no cash whatsoever. And just recently banks started allowing people like that to buy homes during a recession. So I, it just, it that right there, them allowing people that have freshly gotten out of high school with no cash and just a little bit of credit to take on an $1,100 mortgage, take on a $1,500 mortgage um, with no experience in getting people to move into their homes to pay for their mortgages and stuff like that. I think that that's a recipe for disaster. And I, I'm seeing it very consistently throughout the country where young young people with no money are being given home loans. And that it, was, is a, it is a bit fishy. It's like, are they setting you up for failure and knowing that you don't care? The banks will get bailed out. The banks will always get bailed out. They don't give a shit. They got bailed out in 08. They got bailed out in the 90s. They'll always get bailed out no matter what. No matter what. So they they, they are more concerned about, and humans in general are always just more concerned about themselves and making profit for themselves than they'll ever be. That's why I don't really trust like financial advisors and stuff like that normally. Um, some there's certain instances. I think everyone should see a financial advisor at some point, but you need to needs to be a trusted person. Some people can really throw you in different directions because maybe they have certain interests or whatever, or they just have beliefs. Some people would believe that the housing market's impenetrable, but I don't believe anything's impenetrable because I saw I I was I've been involved in investing for a while, and when I was screwing around, Bitcoin was a big eye opener for me because I thought that that actually was like technical investment, but it's something that jumps in value in the thousands in days matter of days really isn't it? <laughs> technically an investment that's more of a gamble and i saw kind of how people responded to losing their homes over bitcoin because i was mm -hmm. deep i was deep in the community when bitcoin was skyrocketing past 10k in 2016 i had invested all the money that i had made from my job like all of it <laughs> every penny and i was because i was i didn't have rent or anything and I was making like 80 grand a year. So I was just like super dedicated to investing in something. So I found Bitcoin and it got to the point where people were so confident that Bitcoin was never going to crash, <laughs> that they were taking out freaking second loans on their homes to invest in it. And then within a month, it dropped in value by 50% and stayed there for a year and a half. <laughs> And I saw so many people that were confident that the market wasn't wasn't going to collapse, lose their entire lives. And that was that moment that I realized that any kind of market, no matter what, like nothing's stable. Um, so I would I don't know if you were thinking about investing right now. It's kind of uh, I mean, investing in real estate is always going to be 
um, if you can hold on to the house and pay for it every month, it's always mm-hmm. going to be a good idea. It's always going to be a good idea no matter what the market does because you're always going to have that asset. And housing generally always does pretty okay no matter – even if it crashes really badly, it generally recovers. So housing is always – Always a good investment to get into. I'm passionate about real estate. I like real estate. It makes sense to me. It, it does make sense. And you know, like you, you do a trade. So like you basically could probably do most of the repairs by yourself. So it's, there's not a lot of like other financial things that go into it. Like my dad, my family, we own a rental property. I used to live in that house until I was three and now we okay. rent it out. And so like, I'm very familiar with everything about it. Like it, it will be passed down to me when that happens thinking about getting some other like re- real estate warehouses and everything. So like I know contracts, I know everything about whatever my dad can fix anything. He can fix cars. I've learned to fix cars. I've learned to, I've never, I've never had anybody change my brakes. I've never had anybody change my oil except for when I got this new car. Cause I was like, it's synthetic and it's a new car. I don't want to mess it up, but like break it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to mess it up on this one that I've, I've been working on old cars my whole life, but like, you know, it's just, man, real estate is something is really good to get into. But I mean, it's not like you're bomb making like 80K a year. Jesus. Is it your own business? Like, or are you, are you employed by somebody? Like, what are you doing? Unfortunately, I wish it was my own business. I hate working for somebody else, man. Um, yeah. No, I, I, uh, I met some really wealthy people at a young age and they kind of saw that like my life sucked, I think. And they were just like, hey, come fucking, we, we work really hard. It's straight trade, dude. I, I sweat, I get dirty. I work 84 hours a week and I get paid a lot, but it's disgusting. Like it, and it's hard, like on my body, like I can feel the physical toll after doing it for four years for sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just worked a normal trade. We, uh, we design and build, um, aluminum smelters and these things are f- huge, like probably four times the size of the garage I'm standing in right now. And, um, basically they're just top loaders. So you have these big cranes that float over, these furnaces that are down here, I'm going to give an image for you, and they'll drop the metal straight into the top of them, and then there's a mm-hmm. big dome slide across the top of it, and then there's big gas burners on the inside of it that shoot flames out of it, and that melts your metal down that you get with your Mountain Dew, or your Coors Light, or whatever. I'm, I'm directly like at those plants that recycle all aluminum in America. Man, that sounds like some, definitely sounds like some Idaho stuff right there. Like, <laughs> like where are the cans made? Idaho. Like, it, no one else. Like, that's so no, different. Bro, like, bro, I travel all over the world for this. I've been to Switzerland. Yeah. I've been to Iceland. I've been to Germany, UK, all over the place. There's aluminum used in all over the world for automobiles. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, but in Texas, it's just a lot different. Like, we have... I'm sure your Idaho music scene isn't like popping, is it? There's no Idaho music scene, bro. I actually have this dream <laughs> to build a studio downtown where I live because it would do well here because there are so many musicians that are like trying to break out here, but there's no studio where I live. There yeah. literally doesn't exist. So it's kind of most of it's just homemade stuff. You know, there's no big mm-hmm. studio. Like I'm sure in Texas, like you could just Texas is huge for music. So you're in the right place. Yeah, I mean, music here is kind of one of the the things that kind of took a hit when everything happened. Like, you know, if Lardy's still in the chat, like she, she's, I mean, she's got her thing. She's, she's still making her bread, but like, there's a lot of artists that, and and DJs too, like we can't, you can't make the same money at, at the clubs anymore because you can't have that many people and you can't pack it out and you can't do this and you can't do that. So it's like music took a hit, like here and we had to figure out how to make money going live or selling more merch and not you know like it's just a whole it's just a whole thing like people that were even working at the radio station like k104 97.9 the beat you know i I met them at the mall and they were selling beard oil at the mall and they're like oh yeah i I mean i work for the radio part-time but it's like it's not even it's not even the same like it's just i don't know man but back on the topic of like law of attraction and, and like manifesting and everything because of semen retention and no fap. It's just, man, um, even with everything that's been going on, just being able to harness the energy that you waste is, is, is incredible. It is. Yes. It's a gift. 
it, it, being aware that you can do it, it's a gift, I think. Mm -hmm. Just having that awareness because uh, it just helps you all the time, especially when you slip up and you can, you can look back kind of uh, on how you felt and you have that that vision of how you were feeling then when you were doing well. And you kind of look back on that and you go, well, I want to feel like that again, obviously. So then you return to that state. And I think I've been kind of stuck in that cycle for a long time of leaving that flow state of semen retention. Um, but I don't watch porn or masturbate. I just have sex. Like I don't, I don't see but a that's reason. Right. But that's different. Yeah. In a way, I, well, it's like you're, sh you're sharing energy with somebody else. And, and, and it's, and if it's with a good person, then it, it's, it's beneficial. It's okay. And I yeah, preach, yeah. I preach not having sex and ha hooking up because, I mean, I did it, dude. I blew through a body count and um, using Tinder, of all things, using Tinder. <laughs> um, making a point to myself as a young man. Just, like, I had a roommate that I worked with, and he's like, let's get it to 100. And I was like, uh, what are you talking about? I hadn't yeah, even. like a little tally system photo. or what? Yeah, pretty much. It was just dumb. And through all that, I realized, and this I was just always one of those people. Fortunately, I'm not anymore, but I learned from other people's mistakes, but I had to learn the hard way a lot of the time. Now, not so much. Now I like to, I like to chill out and <laughs> learn from other people's mistakes instead of my own. But yeah. when I was a young raging bull, I still am, but I'm talking like I grew up fast because I dropped out of high school, like early 17. And that was just where my life started. So it was pretty, pretty early introduction. That was already like pretty deep into uh, some criminal things then. So I, and then I stopped doing all that right around 20 and I moved in with this guy and then I just kind of went crazy. And then now I can come out of that and say, Hey, look, like hooking up with women is just going to fuck your energy up so bad because those girls yeah. have such bad energy inside of them. A lot of them. Um, and you don't know, you don't know what kind of person you're getting involved with, bro. I've straight up had like nightmares because of girls I've had sex with like them almost feeling like them infiltrating my fucking dreams and like trying to like suck the life out of me. Like shit like that's happened to me. And just like feeling depressed after having a hookup with a girl, like, because you knew she was just like this, this lost soul and you just sexually took advantage of her basically. And that was uh kind of few things like you, but you don't think about it like that. You're just like, it's just tender. You're just, you're, but then you end up in these horrible situations and like weird situations where you just show up and the girl's hammered and stuff like that. Like I totally discourage hooking up just from all the experiences I've had with it. Um, but yeah, having sex, like you said, with an important person in your life, they call them in the spiritual community, twin flames. That's what they like the word they like to throw around people that you are designed to be with people that are positive um, radiations in your life, like having sex with women like that, that really care for you and cook for you. And like, actually, like, I don't like to throw the word love around, but people that actually love you just in general, being around you is always going to be a good thing. And yeah. surrounding yourself with women that don't even care about themselves is going to directly like reflect on you and make you feel like shit. So yep, yeah, exactly. I, I completely know for Sambra, like my last relationship was eight months. We, you know, we, we started before in December and then it was like eight months. We broke up like about a month, two and a half months ago, but she was just um, like, you know, I'm a dad. So I have a six year old son and um, I'm not with the mom obviously, but um, she had a daughter and her daughter was three mm -hmm. and uh, she just like, wasn't a good mom. Like she just, she did not like being a mom. She did not like, yeah her child like she, all she cared about was like her work and herself and you could tell like because the way that her child was and i'm not just sitting here trying to talk shit because yeah. it is what it is but even yeah. i've it, i've had self-validation from other people that knew her the same way it's like her child had no compassion her child was three and she would watch youtube videos of like 13 14 year old girls doing things and she's like oh i need to be like them like she never had a chance to be three like she did not yeah. know how to count to 10. She did not know her ABCs. And my son, before he could even speak, he was, he knew his ABCs. Like you show something and he'd be like, like he'd just say like a sound that sounded like the letter or the yeah. number and he just knew it. And because I put that energy into him, I took the time to teach him and be like, Hey man, like love is love. I love you. Here's uh, I told him every single day, even before he could talk or know what I was saying. I love you every single day, every single second. I love you. You're going to be great. You're going to be amazing. You're going to be intelligent, this and that. 
But if you're not folk, if you're focused on only yourself, how can you, how can you raise, how can you raise the, the youth of the future? Like you don't have any business in that. So I her energy, her energy was terrible. She was a narcissist. It was, it was just not a good thing at it's all. And that you realized that before you married her or something. Yeah. I mean, I kind you of must have known that from like the relatively beginning though, maybe, or was yes. that like, a was that a realization you had later on that she was, was like all absorbed? <laughs> it was both like okay so it was both so when i met her i like met her mom and everything or like her parents and even her mom would kind of like try to be like uh defending of herself like garrett I, I don't know why she's like this like i didn't raise her like that like she's just so cold she's just like this and that i'm like yeah it's fine whatever like i'm i'm just the type of person to like blow shit off i'm like whatever like you messed up okay cool you're human you whatever yeah. And then, but like when it, when I started realizing it was when her daughter would cry about not getting her way, which is something like normal kids do. That's what kids do. Yeah. That's what kids do. She, she herself would start to break down and cry and be like, why are you crying? Like, I don't know what to do. Like you right. have to handle it. You got to handle your shit as a parent and be like, no, you're, you're, you have to. Yeah. Your child will recognize too when you're being weak like that, <laughs> and yeah. they'll re they'll respond the same way to situ. They'll just just like a bad cycle, I think. Yeah. Okay. So that's a problem. She didn't know how to raise her kid, so that I see why you wouldn't wouldn't see her as uh, someone that you would want to uh, be a, a person in your life. I get that because if someone can't take care of themselves and also can't take care of the child that they brought into the world, then obviously. They're probably not capable of maintaining a long-term relationship. No, and I mean, and and I mean, at the same time, I think what I saw in her was I value work ethic. So, because yeah. both my parents, they've always been married. They've uh, they work. They both have always worked full time. My sister's five years older than me, and she's always worked full time. And she does hair, and she's successful. And like I've always worked full time since I was fifteen. And like I played baseball for 17 years and I, I had uh, dreams of going pro and I played for these travel teams and I played, you know, showcase tournaments. And my coach was like the nephew of a major league baseball uh, coach, like batting coach. So we all had like a facility and like we were in it. And then one day I just like kind of lost my passion in it. And I was like, hey, I kind of want to like go into the work scene and I kind of want to do music. And so that's the route I took. And what I value in people is work ethic, like regardless of what you look like, like looks are a plus whatever but um work ethic really and like pursuing passions and doing shit that like matters is really is really what kind of like ignites a flame in me that's a good thing yeah and yeah. i mean i can tell that with you man like i just met you today like you randomly popped up in my comments i would have never if i wasn't practicing semen retention i would have never been like yeah let's hop on a podcast tonight i've been like uh, I, I would have made up some excuse like, oh, I got um, I would have done this thing, and I've done that before. Yeah, exactly. Of, you just yeah. make shit up that you don't, you don't have to do anything, and you just like, oh, I, I can't, you know? Yeah, and it's normally just because you feel pretty bad, like just in general, because you're like not taking, if you're not taking care of yourself, obviously you don't want other people to, you don't want to talk to other people, you don't want to be around other people, you don't want other people to know that you're you're feeling not as 100% as you should be. So you kind of avoid social interaction, I think. And that's kind of <laughs> where that antisocial behavior comes from. I think it's a lot of a lot of pornography used and just uh, it, it could be anything, really. Like I said, again, it could be video games or anything. But I think the, the most impact that anything has in this world on your your psyche and the way you interact with people is definitely, definitely jerking off of porn for sure. It has a lot to stem with it. And when I kind of got introduced to it as I was younger, I was probably like 12 or 13 yep. and I found my dad's playboy magazines. And so like, and they were like the legit playboy magazines. Cause when he grew up, it was like, that's what like the thing ordered, was. He ordered them like bottom ordered yeah. them or bought them from the gas station or wherever yeah. they got them. Somebody and he paid also, yeah. Like he had a subscription like yeah. yearly. Yeah. And he also had like a whole case of, yeah, he, he was something else. He, he also had a whole case of like the VHSs, like, you know how they used to have those triple X stores, like on the side of the highway. 
Oh, yeah. Did you ever have those? You've seen those, right? So like yeah, that was he had a <laughs> yeah, that, that's some Idaho stuff. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the uh, I, he just had a bunch of VHSs, and I never like popped them in or whatever, like yeah. Star Wars or whatever they call it. But um, but it's I started looking at those, and I then I like got on AOL Instant Messenger. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but like AIM, and like I started chatting with all my buddies, like, hey, I found my dad's like magazines, blah blah blah, ha ha ha, like this and that. And then it kind of start. And then, then you like start going to these websites that are like, you click on an ad and it leads you here. And then now you got a virus on your computer and it's like windows 98 and you, it's like shuts down all your shit. And you tell your parents, like, I don't know what happened. Like it's <laughs> something you looked up or whatever, but, yeah. um, <laughs> that's, I, it, and that's, that's kind of how it got started. But then yeah. it's from then yeah. it's like, I've always been, you know, intrigued by the oh, body. oh yeah yeah no totally that's kind of how it started for me too um my my friend who i'm living with currently right now <laughs> actually brought out a playboy one time i've known him for like 12 years now and um we're in fucking middle school we're in sixth grade i think and i was at his house and he whips it out and he's like check this out and it was actually like your story it was a legit playboy it was clearly an old used one um it had been around <laughs> that's, that's disgusting <laughs> it's all crinkly and shit yeah. and uh, he whips it out and i was just immediately intrigued and i i had access to freaking laptops growing up like laptops had already become a thing so immediately it was just straight to internet porn after that and then um I got caught like immediately doing it by my parents, like immediately. Cause I just didn't delete search history. I didn't even think about it. Like it just wasn't going through my head in sixth grade. And they come up to me and I was like watching some like fucked up shit, like for a sixth grader for sure. Um, it was like probably like chicken double teamed or something. And my mom's like, what's this? And I, at that moment I would have wished that I was in a fucking multifamily household because my dad would have kicked my ass into oblivion, but my fucking mom didn't. And I just kept doing it and she didn't do anything about it. And I was doing it on her computer and like, I got smart with it after a while, but that's kind of how my introduction happened. If I would have had a more involved, more, my mom was really drunk back then, drinking a lot and shit. And it probably explains why I grew up the way it did. I don't, mm -hmm. it's not a sap story. It's just reality. And I, I do say it because I know that a lot of younger men have, or are currently in situations like that with like a shitty mom or something or a shitty single parent. Um, cause I think most, my theory has always been that most young children that have major issues, um, grew up either in poverty or with a single parent or both. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say I grew up in poverty. I had what I needed, so I'm not going to say that. But I definitely grew up with a single parent that was incapable of raising three children by herself. So there was obviously, um, like I said, my house was like free reign. So I did what I wanted, got away with everything for the most part. Because how can a single mother punish a growing boy? Like, there's not much you can do when there's somebody like me who just wants to do whatever they want. So that's when... I had that I had that epiphany that multifamily households are like infinitely better for children's mental health. Um, and it's kind of sad the amount of divorce that like goes on just nonchalantly these days because they don't ever take into account how they're ruining a child's life <laughs> mm -hmm. or at least or at least potentially ruining a child's life. There's a lot of divorced kids that turned out okay, but the majority of them that I speak to are like internally scarred from it because their parents became incredibly selfish after the divorce and started just acting really nasty. Um, fortunately, my dad didn't do that. My dad's always been a very devout Christian man. Um, so I did have like one really good, like solid in that entire side of that family, really solid people, very wealthy, very like spiritual people. They've, they've developed um, a good portion of life. I think my mom's side are the crazy ones. So I kind of just stay away from them. <laughs> Yeah, everybody has that one crazy side. Like my mom's side is uh, Native American and Italian, so they're like loud and they That's they don't fire. care. That's yeah, fire. Some fire, fire, and um, and then I mean I like it because I got like decent skin in the summertime, and but like besides that, my dad is uh he's German and white. I mean I don't know what what my grandma is, but my my grandpa, my papa, he's um. Uh, 
he's german yeah so that's where my last name hoskins comes into play they have like a teddy bear factory in germany and it's called like the hoskins teddy bear factory but um yeah it's it's weird yeah. it doesn't have anything to do with anything but it's uh it's there and yeah. um but uh like my my mima on my mom's side she's like this tiny little like indian lady not not like hindu but like you know indian yeah, and like american. right like and i could like apply for the native american benefits if i needed to but i've never s needed to but um it's 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 different man it's like that side of the my both my parents like my mom has two or one sister and two brothers my dad has two brothers two sisters so they were definitely like the boomers. Like they had a ton of kids. I have a ton of family on both sides and they're both just very different. My dad's side, he was like an altar boy, very Catholic. Um, and then my mom's side was like Baptist and Christian. So when I went to church, I was, I was baptized both. So I was right. raised in a church. I would go to Sunday school. I would do like a Bible study and I was never good at it. Like I could not, re I don't remember one single Bible verse. But You're you know, more, but. <laughs> yeah, like we were there, but yeah, you yeah, were born yeah. in the church. No, 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 no. Oh, I was yeah. born in the hospital. No, I was born in church. I remember we oh, went yeah. religiously as a child. I remember you'd always be wanting to like be outside or something, doing something mm -hmm. else. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was dude. Church, I think, in God, I've always just been a part of my family in general, and I know that my parents pray for me like consistently because they tell me they do and coming back to where we we're at you were saying that god was watching over me at all times and i completely agree with that um and i think god's watching over everyone at all times but some people just aren't aware i think of when that's happening um and that's another thing seeing retention grants you is more awareness of life just in general and more awareness of what's going on because you see the little tiny little details that you would have normally been you would have been too involved in your own head or thinking about something or worried about what someone was looking at you or worried about well it's an infinite things that the mind can come up with but when you're on semen retention you have this clarity where you can look around and you see a fucking butterfly do something weird that you would have never even noticed mm -hmm. that's an example but that it it raises your awareness it kind of takes away your subconscious a little bit like it's kind of you don't really think about you think only in the moment it's beautiful it's what yeah. people try to achieve with meditation um or it's what people thought they would achieve with meditation i'm pretty sure meditation just achieves enlightened states which are like temporary so you can achieve like really like crazy like psychedelic states of mind through meditation but i don't think it really gives you the base awareness that semen retention does i think because it's really weird a lot of spiritual teachers disregard sexual energy um a lot of meditators disregard sexual energy like it's nothing like it's unimportant like it's this thing that doesn't actually have this inherent value that we give it and it's it's strange to me because that's what meditators are trying to achieve quote unquote is awareness or more awareness um they're trying to achieve this like enlightened state where they're like more higher than everybody else but literally just not coming does that it's it's kind of an interesting thing to figure out isn't it because it's simple you literally just have to not do something i don't mm -hmm. even have to meditate. i just have to not do something and i feel my awareness raised like almost every day mm -hmm. the longer, i think the longer you harness your sexual energy i think the better things do get for like extended but there's a i think there's like a a wall just as with anything so the benefits aren't just going to keep getting crazier and crazier before you know it, you have laser beams shooting out of your eyes and your cocks the size of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> no, it's going to come to a certain point where you just feel good and you just consistently feel good every day. That's the whole point because so many people get so twisted up in all this spiritual hoodoo, voodoo bullshit and they, they don't realize that really all you need to do is just not come and drink a lot of water and eat really well and think good thoughts about yourself and the world around you and you're going to have a damn good life. <laughs> That's really all it is. And you can create the life that you want. You can manifest anything that you want and it's life will give it to you when the time is right for you to get to have that. And you're not going to wish upon a million dollars and have a million dollars the next day. Like it's going, life is going to put challenges and opportunities 
in front of you. It's going to see how you're going to react, God, the universe, whatever. But it's going to see how you react to these things and you react good. Okay, you're on to the next level. You react bad. Okay, here's another setback. Here's another obstacle. Get over that obstacle. And now you're you're back on the right track. But like it's I've always kind of thought that like things happen in threes. I don't know why, but like so good things and bad things happen in threes. So like for instance, you wreck your car and then your car gets totaled and then the next time like you're late for work or and then the next time like you I don't know, like you forget to pay rent and you you might be evicted. But then like when something good happens, it's like it always comes back like full force. And yeah. I don't know, numerology, numbers, that's always been a big thing for me. Yeah. And it's uh well I did a numerology report of like a couple I would say like six months ago. And uh I, when I moved, I just moved into this apartment. So like about a month ago. So like when I started my journey, my apartment number is 2323. So I looked it up and basically what it was saying is when you go, it's an angel number, it's heavenly. When you go into this apartment or if you're, you know, if this number pops up in your life, then that means like everything that you have worked for, everything that you have wanted will start to come to fruition. And then my numerology report said at the age of 29, so your 29th year, you will find success. So whatever that means, like money or fulfillment or anything, like I will find it. So I turned I'm 20. You would, I'm glad you success that way. Because a lot of oh, people just yeah. say number. Which... I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm actually like, I feel successful now. Like I have a happy, yeah. healthy life. My, my child is like amazing. Everybody around me is healthy and happy except for my grandmother who has like stage four cancer. But even then she like, she's had it for like eight months and still is here. And she has yeah. chosen to like not do chemo. And she's chosen to just like, just like, and even she's come to like terms with herself. Like, Hey, I have cancer when I die don't be sad for me. Like, I'm not sad for me. Don't be sad for me. You know? And it's like, it's everybody in my life is okay. And even if it's not okay, it's still okay. It's going to be fine. So it's, it's always going to be. Life will always continue. Mm -hmm. you it's, know? I mean, it's, it's, it's such a hard thing to think like that when you're having that streak of bad luck, like you were saying. Um, but, you know, the more and more, good things that compound in your life. It's just like a snowball. It's going to continue to go that way. And I think over time you do experience less and less bad things <laughs> happening. Hopefully that's you just do. my theory. I, that's just my theory. I don't know. I'm 24. I still have a lot of life to live. Maybe a lot of bad things will happen, but I think that if you, if you gravitate towards good, good things are going to continuously happen more often than bad things. Bad Hopefully. things are only bad because you claim that they're bad. This is true as well. This is a, this is a b very strong Buddhist opinion that thoughts are only given the power and things are only given the power that you give them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But yep, that I, kind of thinking, that kind of thinking is really easy to say when you're not going through whatever you might be going through. It's a lot easier to say it now when I'm in a good space, but when you're going through that, it's a lot harder to think like that. But, you know, like I said, good things compound. So over time, you're going to bounce back from like bad behavior a lot quicker and whatever that bad behavior is for you. Maybe it's smashing Instagram thoughts. Maybe it's whatever you're into, whatever your pastimes are that are, that are causing you to um, feel like you're not being your best self whether it's drinking on the weekends or over consuming shitty food or, you know, cheating on your girlfriend or whatever you're doing that's making you feel bad in life. Just know that you can compound that with good things and you can remove those bad things. It's always possible. And you're not a bad person for doing those things. You're just a human being who simply has a monkey brain, but we have a um, divine um, soul inside of us. So <laughs> tap into it, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's all about controlling your thoughts like if you can harness your brain you can harness everything yeah and luckily us human beings have been given consciousness so we can do that we are capable of controlling our compulsivity in our brain and we're very compulsive human beings human beings are very compulsive we're incredibly compulsive 
um, if we allow ourselves to be, but if you're conscious about um, life, you can, you can, you can really stop a lot of compulsivity in its tracks. So, yeah, I think now is probably a good time to end the podcast. For Let's sure. We're at the, the sweet mark right now about hour 15. This was a really quality podcast. I am impressed. It, no, was, it was a good convo, honestly. You're a good speaker. Thank you. You, you too, brother. Doing, you continue doing YouTube. Yeah. I will. You, you do the same, bro. Like, honestly, I, I hope to one day meet you in person. And I hope to one day just build a successful life together and keep bringing each other up. And I will be your biggest fan. So you just, bro, whatever you need, let me know. I'll be there for you. It's all good, bro. Me, I've been doing this with a few senior retention YouTubers. I started off with a guy that was bigger than me, and he just hit me up and said, let's work together. And we did a podcast, and we still play video games almost every day together. So, yeah, dude, I definitely see you as being – I think you're going to be a key person in this because I've been waiting for more people to come into this little sphere because I know – and you can monetize it too. Yep, it exactly, because you, you're it. talking about nothing. I mean, you're not talking about nothing, but you're talking about no. something. I'm just pulling up my camera for 10 minutes and shouting into it. Right. Or two minutes or 30 seconds or yeah. whatever, you know? Yeah, whatever. But yeah, um, it'll. I think we should do another podcast. Um, we'll keep in touch. Obviously, I have all your information and stuff. I know your YouTube channel. So. Bro, you're We're the not homie now. You're not, you're not going anywhere. You're the homie. No sir. no, sir. Thank you for doing this podcast today, Bravo. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, Kyle, thank you. I enjoyed it. Of course, man. Have a great night. Enjoy your night. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.